This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Coming by with her kids then, and Steve told Verena that Michelle's girl was going to play with his girl, and Michelle's boy was going to play with his boy, and putting a smirk on his face, he mustered up his courage, decided to go for it, and said, And you and Michelle can play. God, I'd love to see that. No way she could miss his meaning, given the smirk. He was instantly mortified. He'd gone too far. Verena was going to be mad. But after half a beat, she laughed instead. She thought it was funny. She thinks Steve's funny. It makes him feel good. Tara used to think he was funny, too. End of January, Tara was in London on business, and Steve and Verena were talking in the Grant's big, four-bedroom, reddish-brown brick colonial in Washington Township, where what were recently cornfields twenty miles north of Detroit's northern city limit have been turned into outsized homes and overextended mortgages. They found each other fascinating, the way people do at that stage. Steve got a look on his face and told her he was thinking another bad thought, but this time, he said, he'd keep it to himself, meaning he wouldn't blurt it out like he did about Michelle and Verena. No, said Verena, tell me. So he did. He told her he wanted to kiss her. Oh, I can't believe you said that, she said, coy, not mad. They kept talking for another twenty minutes, standing in the hallway. The next night, or was it the night after, she was in her room, getting ready for bed. Stephen came to the doorway. You're so beautiful, he said. I want to sleep with you. She laughed. They started talking, talked for four hours before going to bed in their separate rooms at 2 a.m. That's how it started. They'd sneak kisses, short kisses that became longer and more passionate. One day she was at the computer, typing an email to her brother when she heard Stephen behind her. I'm going to take a shower. Want to join me? He was getting bolder, she more intrigued by the idea of consummating the heat growing between them. No, she said. Another night just after she went to bed, he texted her from another room in the house. I want to have sex with you, was the message. She typed, No. On February 7th, again just after she'd gone to her room for the night, he stuck his head in. Good night. I love you. He came in and sat down on her bed. I won't repeat those three little words again, but I am falling in love with you. They hugged and cuddled for a few minutes. Wordlessly, Stephen stood up, took her by the hand, pulled her to her feet, and led her to his room. He leaned her back on the bed, slid down her panties, and gave her oral sex, a gift she accepted with ardor and appreciation. To show her what a giving and generous man he is, he ended their sexual encounter with just that act. He didn't, not yet anyway, need to have it reciprocated. This is for you, he seemed to say. Your gift to me can come another time. So that was what Americans meant by swept off your feet. In a daze, she went back to her room. She couldn't wait to tell her best friend in America. They haven't had intercourse yet, but it's been on Grant's mind since. That time is coming. Soon. About 11.30, Verena pulls her car into the driveway. She walks in the side door. She hears someone coming down the stairs. It's Stephen, racing to greet her, coming to get the kiss, oh, sweet double meaning there, that he's texted her that she owes him? No. What the fuck are you still doing here? Go, just go, he yells. Then realizing it's Verena, he apologizes. Is Tara still out there? he asks. No. Where is she? She's not outside, she answers. 
Stephen starts crying. It's horrible. Tara got home an hour earlier. She'd unpacked it.